All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from a sunny San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined from the other coast in beautiful Naples, Florida, absolutely beautiful part of Florida, if you ever get a chance to visit, by Jason Shepard. How are you doing, Jason? I am doing amazing, John. Great to see you today. I'm a little envious. You know, you got uh, you got some good weather over there in San Diego as well. So we do, but we've got higher taxes than you. Yes, you do. <laughs> but we have, we have hurricanes. You know, that's so. true too. So we could probably do a few trade offs here. But right. <laughs> and Jason's a serial entrepreneur and financial technology visionary, dedicated to empowering individuals to achieve financial freedom. Co-founder of Mula, an AI-driven investment platform that simplifies complex financial concepts and provides personalized insights and recommendations. And prior to that, you had some successful ventures and exits. And what we That's want right. to talk about today is really on um, talk about startups and, and, and business founders. And, and Jason, there's a lot of people today, I mean, particularly since COVID, and there's a few things. There's, there's COVID, there's the spread of virtual work. Uh, okay. uh, and so there's a lot of things that have come together that more than ever people are thinking about, maybe I should go out on my own, maybe I should start my own business. Uh, but but then there's always the kind of reality, yeah, but you know, how do I finance this? And how do I make mm -hmm. sure that I have enough and um, you have enough cash flow to get me through? And you know, can I really sure. do this? And will somebody really invest in me at the end of the day? So what when when you talk to people and they sort of say those kind of things to you, what do you say? Sure. Um, you know, for us, it wasn't a choice. I grew up in an entrepreneurial family, so right. maybe I have a bias towards that. But but taking the other side of that argument, because we hear it all the time, I want to go out on my own. I want to be a freelancer. I want to I want to be my own boss. Right. That's been a, that's been a big movement. And I think all of that is wonderful. But I would just give you one kind of thought provoking idea. Mm -hmm. Are you just going to be creating a job for yourself? Right. If you're just going to go out and replace your sixty thousand dollar a year salary with a sixty thousand dollar a year business, trust me, there's a way more headaches in the sixty thousand dollar a year business than there is in the sixty thousand dollar a year W two job. Right. Uh, because you're not sweating over payroll clearing and taxes, and no one told me in an LLC all those all that revenue flows through me to me personally, and I wasn't prepared for that. What's a quarterly estimated tax? Like, there's so many aspects. I would just encourage you, make sure you're just not making a job for yourself because those exist out there already. I'm a big fan of entrepreneurship. I'm a big fan of going out on your own, but there's got to be an action plan and we got to work that plan. I'm not talking this 28 page business mm -hmm. plan because we all know what happens to those, right? They're beautiful yep. on paper, but they very rarely get executed, but we have to have some ideas on what are those next steps? Where is that funding coming from? Like you spoke about. So what are some of the so if you ask yourself that question, okay, I want to I want to create a business, I don't want to just create a job, I want to create a business, um, whether this is a business that expands, hires people or a business yes. that I, you know, a legacy I can leave or whatever it is, what are what are some of the first things that you need to consider? A business takes two things, time and money, mm -hmm. and, and you have to really have both. Um, in the case of like a bootstrap, our first business that we made a very great exit from uh, after 16 years of hard work, we bootstrapped. By bootstrapped, I mean we used our own funds. Uh, we didn't take in any investors or anything mm -hmm. like that. I went the time route and it took me 16 years to get to that exit, yep. um, which is great. But could that have happened faster if I raised some funds? But then there's the opposite. I, I We said we need time and money. How often do we see these Silicon Valley type companies? And it's not just Silicon Valley, it's any kind of venture backed company with an idea and $40 million in a reg A plus yep. fund. And you go, they haven't even made, made a dollar, let alone turned a profit yet. Yep. They've got more money and now they have to put the time in to do something with it. I honestly think you need a balance. I'm a mm -hmm. big fan of bootstrapping with Moolah, right? We sold our business, retired for like two days. My wife and I said, hey, let's do it again. And now we're bootstrapping. Granted, we have some firepower behind us now from the previous sale, sure. but it's still time and money in a nice, even balance. Mm -hmm. And and I think the other thing, Jason, is I think sometimes these things take a little longer than we would like. Always. Right? So I think there's the patience. And we always need a 
we always need more money than we originally estimate. Always. And I think that's and I think that's the thing that und undoes a lot of people when they're starting businesses is the is that whole liquidity and cash flow because you know you can start your business and maybe you're lucky, maybe you maybe you have some clients immediately and life looks good because you're saying, yes. Well, I get this revenue, but they aren't paying you immediately. So that right. money actually isn't in your bank account. So I, I think that's where oftentimes is you it takes a little longer. And you need more money than you anticipated. You're you're exactly right. You can't pay bills on receivables. Yeah. Right. You, you got you got to collect it at the end of the day. And and it all depends on the industry and and on that niche, right? If you're getting paid on net sixty terms, yeah. that's gonna take some time to collect on that money and everything else. So this is where that plan comes into place. And you're exactly right. This is so our first business was actually in aviation. So right. sorry for all the aviation examples and analogies today, but in an airplane. I always have plan A, B, C, and D. Like mm -hmm. my goal is to fly from Naples to San Diego, but believe it or not, I'm off course most of the time. There's mm -hmm. weather around Texas. I have to deviate around and air traffic control is busy over New Mexico. So they take me this way, but I still always know where I'm going, which is San Diego. I was off course most of the mm -hmm. way. If you drew a straight line between the two and that's exactly how business is. You need to know the goal. You need to know where you're going. And by when I say know the goal, I don't mean I want $100,000 in sales. I mean, do you want to sell this thing one day? I'm talking like your 20 year vision because I wish someone pulled me aside and said, hey, you're building this business to sell. Let's start acting like it because I wasn't at the beginning. Right. And when private equity came knocking to buy us, I wasn't ready for it. Mm -hmm. And we actually lost the first deal. So I wish someone pulled me aside and said, hey, you're building this thing to sell. That's your goal. And let's work on getting towards that goal. Yeah, and obviously as part of that, that means that you have to think a little differently from the start, oh, yeah. right? You have to actually structure the business properly. You mm -hmm. have to make sure all the all the all the pieces are are in place, and you you've got to have a, a provable thesis too. Absolutely, you not only and yes, you can launch a business on a good idea. Mm -hmm. But what good is a good idea without the team around it? You know, yeah. Jim Collins talks about in his book, Good to Great. One of the things that keeps a business from going good to great is a genius with a thousand followers, right? But, oh, it's just, just the genius that does all the work. Like you can't be yeah. the, the puppeteer pulling all the strings. You have to have the great idea, but you have to have the team that levels up your thinking, levels up the idea. And that's hard. If someone's listening to this going, Jason, I just want to freelance. Like, what do you mean I have to hire people and, and such? Like... Our business, and you can probably relate to this, John, our business did not start experiencing exponential growth until we implemented leverage in the forms of not just technology, but of human capital as well. Um, our first business was very heavy into production. Just to give you an idea, we did, um, we were the largest producer of FAA test preparation, videos, books, curriculum, everything for pilots learning to fly. Right. And it used to be Jason writing the books and Jason on camera. And guess what? I edited them too. And I did all these things. And the day I said, no, 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 my time is best served. Yes. Writing this content, creating it, not behind back then it was iMovie, you know, figuring out how to edit everything and, and all of that. But our first hire was someone to help with production. And that allowed me to expedite my time. It's making these smart strategic hires with that goal in mind to kind of march you in that direction. Yeah. And what's great about it today, Jason, is the fact is, number one is there are so many different types of of roles and tasks and things that are needed in a business, and they've become more specialized than ever. Yes. But on the flip side, the great thing is now you have the ability with Upwork and things like that. Was, mm -hmm. You don't have to hire full-time employees all the time. You can hire contractors, fractional resources. You yes. can hire. And the greatest thing is I can get an expert in exactly that. And yes. then hire them for two days a week if that's all I, if that's all that's needed. You are you are spot on. The majority, I'd say, eighty percent of the team at Mula uh, is all remote. Most of them, you know, contractors through Upwork. Mm -hmm. Many not even in America, yep. uh, which allows us a great cost savings. You're getting an expert, and by the way, you're also being a blessing to them because a U.S. dollar converts way better in India or Pakistan or the sure. Philippines than it does here. Yeah. as well so you're really helping out an, another economy another family as well mm -hmm. and you're getting very highly skilled people i mean sometimes i'm amazed at uh, all these people who are going to college they're doing master's yeah. degrees yeah. they're doing double masters they're doing all of this so there's a lot of fantastic fantastic talent out there but i guess the thing is jason is one of the hardest things when somebody's starting a business is to 
replace themselves right yeah. because they always fall into that into that trap of thinking yeah yeah i could hire jason but then i'm gonna have to teach him what to do i'm gonna show oh. him i might as well just do it myself you got to break yeah. that mindset yeah you know i used to have uh i'm big into like you said the mindset of how we think about things mm -hmm. and i used to have a negative belief where i said nobody will treat my business like i do nobody will treat my finances like that was and and that actually kept me under lock a little bit and held me back and limited me because I thought I had to do it. Maybe uh, I needed a little bit of humility. There was a season where maybe I thought I had like the Midas touch and everything I did was so great. And in reality, there are people that are smarter, better, faster than myself, and your time is better spent in your skill set. My personal skill set is, is marketing, sales type things, a little bit of design and creativity in there as well. Someone may be more the engineering mind, mm -hmm. the dev side of the team, the, whatever that may be. Stick, you got to stay in your lane yeah, and, yeah. And, and hire for those weaknesses as well and those blind spots. Yeah, because I mean, ultimately, you have to you have to be honest with yourself in the fact that the things that you can't do or you can't do well, probably never going to be able to do them really well because it's probably just not what you're interested in, probably sure. not what your what your your what your skill set is. Mm -hmm. uh, and therefore you're only going to be frustrated. And in fact, you're probably going to invest more time than mm -hmm. is needed into that precisely because you're not very good at it. You are spot on. You have to be a willing teacher. You have to be willing to give these tasks off. Uh, otherwise, you're going to be your own limitation mm -hmm. um, in all of this, right? You're going to come across speed bumps and everything else. Napoleon Hill says in the book, think and grow rich in every adversity. There's a seed of a greater advantage. So when I hit that speed bump, I'm already thinking, where's the advantage? Who can I hire? Who is better at this than I am? Just like the analogy of flying to Naples to San Diego, you are mm -hmm. off course zigzagging most of the time. Business is the same way. And I guess too, Jason, nowadays, there's many different ways of, of uh, funding your business too. I mean, yeah. you were talking about PEs and that, but there's a lot of different ways is, that, that you can fund. What are some of the ways that, uh, what are some of the more interesting ways that you've seen lately? Wow. So uh, obviously we bootstrapped, uh, bootstrapped when we had nothing and bootstrapped yeah. now that we have a little bit of firepower behind us. Um, one thing I'm, I'm very seriously considering for Moolah as a one to two year type goal uh, is regulation A plus, right? Mm -hmm. Regulation A plus uh, here in America is essentially crowdfunded raising. It's a mini IPO to the public. Yes, it's regulated by the SEC, but think of it almost like a it's a cheesy analogy, but it's like a Kickstarter for your business. It generally is crowdfunding, but in the sense that these people are actually buying shares. Mm. It is regulated. You're, you're limited to how much you can raise. Um, it is a little expensive, the paperwork and everything else to get it started. Uh, but there's plenty of companies out there that help lead this. Um, Seed Invest, there's many others, Dealmaker out there that do these sort of things. So I've been really genuinely exploring that quite a bit because... Um, Great to build that investor base and just mm -hmm. think about it from a business standpoint. What kind of loyalty do you have, John, if people are now shareholders in your business, right? They're already right. using Moolah for their finances. Now they're literally invested with hundred bucks, 200 bucks, something small in your business. How much stronger does their word of mouth get? All these things. It's very, very fascinating. I love, uh, I love that, uh, that whole space. Yeah, because you got to think of uh, they're going to be going around talking about uh, your product all the time because they're going to be excited. Even being a small owner in something, everybody likes to be an, <clears throat> a part owner in things. So, you, I mean, that's, exactly that's, right. a, that's a great model as well. And for those who do decide you know, to go the next route, maybe to look at angel investors or P mm -hmm. or private equity groups. And you said something interesting at the beginning there is from the get-go you need to set up your business as if yeah. you're as if you're going to sell it at any moment yeah. right yeah and obviously when you engage with these people the more knowledgeable you are the better yes no you're exactly right and um someone told me one day it's kind of a cheesy analogy but they said jason it's time to run your business like a big boy business right you're running it like you're a little kid now it's time to grow up um, a little bit and uh, we were actually approached by a private equity company about a year before the one that we closed the deal on and we lost that deal and the reason i lost that deal is because i was running my business like a mom and pop business mm -hmm. and and just being honest i'm sure no one from the irs is listening and it's yeah. in the past anyways so it doesn't matter but <laughs> sometimes you go to the grocery store and you use the business credit card and when it hits quickbooks you go yeah that was an office meal right mm -hmm. or whatever like that that's the joy sometimes of business ownership and those are the things we do and it sounds good 
but it's it's very wrong because when that PE firm came in and they looked at QuickBooks, they said, Jason, we believe you have a very profitable and great business, but we can't make heads or tails of it. Like you, you went on this business trip and you could have stayed at a holiday inn for the conference, but you and the wife stay at the Ritz Carlton, right? Like, so <laughs> how do we balance these things? What is your true EBITDA? What is your true, yeah. uh, you know, profit on this business? They couldn't make heads or tails of it. And because of that, they walked away. Yeah. And, and I think that's a super example, Jason, because that on, you know, commingling, but untangling that is a nightmare later. Mm. No, it's we um we got into ad backs and everything else and you know it forced me when my friend pulled me aside and said Jason you lost that deal because you're not running this like you're running this like a kid grow up mm -hmm. and and run a proper business so that's when we again went to Upwork found the expert bookkeeper for you know a fraction of the cost sure. QuickBooks certified master's degree in finance I believe she was out of the Philippines just true uh, superstar caught up on all the books, reconciled and everything. Eight months later, the next PE firm comes along. Again, we weren't looking for either of these, mm -hmm. comes along and can finally understand the books and can see the vision and see where this is going. And we're able to really clean that up. So again, the things you learn in 16 years, like I, I, I'm a college dropout. I, I, didn't, right. I didn't go to a fancy business school or anything like that. I learned this the hard way. And that's just, I mean, if anybody learns anything from this, it's from day one, you got to take your business serious. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if anybody's ever been through the process, as you know, it's, uh, you know, people think that, oh, the most important thing is I'm going to sell this big idea and everything. Saying, yeah, that's great. Um, they love to hear about these great new ideas, but it's the next level down that's going to tell whether they're going to even pursue the conversation. That's when they say, sure. okay, interesting idea. Now show me the sales and marketing plan. Now show me the financials. Now show me the business structure. And as you said, if you're still stuck on, but it's a great idea. <laughs> I mean, sometimes you'll get some venture capital money for great ideas, but at the end of the day, we were selling a living, breathing business. And guess what? They bought it on EBITDA. They didn't care if I was selling computers or selling flight train. It didn't matter. They're buying it on EBITDA, a multiple of EBITDA, and that's what really matters. So keeping those books clean uh, was so, so vitally important. And I think the other thing there, Jason, that you just touched on there is that it's also very important to to run a very tightly managed and lean or lean organization. I mean, yeah. lean from an expense point of view, because as you said, I mean, you can get carried away, especially early in a business and start spending money like a drunken sailor, right? You know, when mm -hmm. you think, okay, I need this and we should have that. I think resisting those temptations and really being, being very, very careful in your spending at the beginning is also a critical piece. Well, especially if you're spending other people's money. That's right. True. Other other people's money spends way way better than your money does. <laughs> that's that's actually been a very interesting exercise for us with uh, launching Moolah with all our own funds. Mm -hmm. You better believe we watch every dollar a whole lot closer than we do if we just went to Silicon Valley and raised forty million dollars. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, and as you said, when somebody comes and looks from the outside, they're much more impressed when they see that that really tight um, management. Um, and so, uh, Jason, just uh, before we go, your 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 product, your Moolah product, AI driven. T talk to me a little bit about how AI is impacting your business. Wow, I mean, it is. It's been everything for us with large language models and everything else because it allows us to take what Wall Street's been doing for years and put it in your pocket, mm -hmm. right? Algorithmic trading, looking over fifty six key data points. You know, our avatar for this is the 30 year old firefighter, the 35 year old nurse, somebody who knows they need to start investing, start saving, start getting smart, but doesn't have the time, doesn't have the financial education uh, or even the time to go get that financial education. I'm a teacher at heart. I was a flight instructor for 16 years. I still am a flight instructor. I love teaching. Now we're just teaching financial literacy and we're using those AI driven tools to break through all the fluff that if you went to a Yahoo Finance and all these numbers and candlesticks jump out at you, mm -hmm. you just want you just want to know, is this a company I can get behind, right? Do they, do they create things I believe in? And are they on financially sound ground? We're not trying to make day traders. We're not right. trying to, you know, anything like that. I'm trying to make people that want to, you know, buy and hold and grow with this great company, um, collect the dividends and, and look at it again in 20 years and go, oh my goodness, look what compound interest, that, that's a real thing, right? Look what it did. Yeah. Yeah, and what's great about that, uh, you know, Jason, is obviously a lot of people have been locked out of these things in the past. Just mm -hmm. and not because you can't get in, just because it seems so daunting because of the amount yes. of knowledge you need, or it seems very complicated, or you have to devote X amount of time and all of that. Sure. 
I think the more the more people like you who are de demystifying and kind of stripping yes. away the noise, you know, the better it is for people. Well, why we saw this in aviation. Aviation mm. had like a country club type vibe. Like if you mm. want to become a pilot, it was almost like, well, you got to join our club. Finance is the same mm. way. Yep. They have their own lingo, their own acronyms. And at the end of the day, normal people believe the system is rigged against them. It's it's yep. truly not. They just need to understand how to play the rules, right? They don't even understand the rules of the game. And that's the biggest part of all of this is teaching them the rules get and helping them, most importantly, get in the game time uh, is, is what you need in the game. Yeah, fantastic. Well, listen, this has been fascinating. All of Jason's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and the product. Sure. So uh, they can check it out. Like link, like you said, John said, links below at moo.la, M-O-O dot L-A to really check it out and see. Uh, check out the investing platform, the savings side as well, which is uh, envelope style budgeting all in your pocket just to make life much, much easier for you. I always love having business conversations and just chatting and learning more. So do find us on all our social accounts as well from TikTok all the way through YouTube uh, at Moolah Copilot so we can connect there as well. Perfect. Listen, thank you, Jason. Thank you for watching and listening. See you all again very soon. Thank you. Yeah.